Brother Ricky and I have been working together this week. Um, he's going to be doing the calling later on. And we um, have chosen to look at a passage that is familiar to many. It's found in Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Brother Ricky is going to do wonderful, and I'm going to do counselor this morning. There are those in this world who may be able to be a defender, a counselor, somebody that's in a courtroom that may be defending somebody, maybe that has done something wrong or maybe they hadn't done something wrong, somebody that can guide, that can intercede for that person and to hopefully help clear their name. But nobody can be the counselor. Christ is our counselor. He is the perfect counselor because there is power that attends every word that proceeds from his mouth. His words are purposeful. They are intentional. They are not frivolous. They are not just thrown out randomly. They have an intention and there is power that attends his word. There's, there is authority that comes with his word, an authority that cannot be thwarted. Even when he was in the earth, in his weak, weaker state, if you will, we see when he spoke, there was power in his word. We're told, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. This was at age 12 when he was found in the temple by his parents. They were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Again, later on, they said, And they were all amazed and spake among, the, among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And again, after several trips to Jesus to try and trick him, and to get him to stumble, they said this, after that, they durst not ask him any questions at all. Why was that? Because Jesus, with his word, had power to silence the foolish talk. He was able to silence them with his word. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. No other man is able to say this about his word. They are spirit, his spirit, they are spirit, and they are life. His word commands these things. We see demonstrated throughout his earthly ministry his word and what it was able to do. His word was able to calm a storm with simply saying, Peace, be still. And the waters obeyed him, they were stilled. We see that Lazarus was raised from the dead by him simply saying, Lazarus, come forth. It was by his word. Now we're looking at the word counselor and the power that is behind the word counselor. On several occasions, he told the person that he was ministering to, your sins are forgiven. We can't say that to a man because it wouldn't mean anything. It would be, it would be empty, empty words, but Christ because he is the counselor, is able to say, your sins are forgiven, or go and sin no more. He was able to tell this to the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, and she could do this because his word was with power. Or how about take up thy bed and walk? This man was infirmed for many years, and no doubt he wished I'm sure that he could take up his bed and walk, but there was no power behind that desire. But when Jesus spoke it, he was able to take up his bed and walk. Then I like the account that's found in Luke 24. This is after Jesus was crucified. He had risen, but nobody was able to really connect it yet. They weren't able to put it together that Jesus had risen from the dead. And there are two walking, Cleopas and his friend, they were walking, they were distraught at what had happened. They were burdened because they thought this was the one. He, Jesus was the one that was going to deliver us. Then they were met on the road by somebody, by a stranger, they thought. And this is what Jesus said to them. O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. 
Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus, they still didn't know who he was. Later on, they'll figure out when he broke the bread. And he broke it. And this is what they said after he left them. After he broke the bread and gave thanks, he left. He disappeared. And this is what they, they came to this conclusion. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? It was his word that caused for their hearts to burn because he was speaking with power and with authority. He was guiding them. He was counseling them in the way that their mind should be thinking. He was leading them. So, brethren, if Jesus, when he was in, the, in, in this earth, spoke with power, what are the possibilities now that he's been exalted to the right hand of the throne of God? He's been exalted. He was in the weaker state in the earth. He said this, My sheep hear my voice, and they will not follow another. When we avail ourselves to the thing that Je- things that Jesus has spoken, we will not err in our way. He will not allow for that to happen. He will lead us beside the still waters and the green pastures. And in the time of a storm, he can calm our soul. He can do this. Amen. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pa- is passed from death unto life. Amen. So if we hear his word, if we abide by the counsel that he gives, we will have everlasting life. We're told in 1 John that Jesus is our advocate. Now that's what a counselor does. He's an advocate. He he pleads our case before the Father. He said, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He's able to effectively advocate our cause before the Father. He is able to provide a way for us to come before the Father if, peradventure, we would sin, to come before the Father and be cleansed and redeemed. Jesus does this. He's our counselor. He's our intercessor. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but is in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin, Then we conclude, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for us. Jesus knows what it's like to be in the flesh. He understands it. He was here. He experienced it firsthand, what it is like to be in the flesh. This is what makes him our effective counselor. He's able to make intercession because he knows what it's like to live in the enemy's territory. Life is sustained by our counselor. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So he sustains us. By the word of Christ, the purpose of God is made known. He is the one that reveals what God is doing, what the will of the Father is. He said that. I come to do the will of my Father. This is why I have come. And the will of the Father is to make himself known. And Jesus, our counselor, our guide, he does this very thing. Jesus will smite the nations with the word. He will smite the nations. He will recompense those who have come against he and his people. Jesus will do this with a word. So brethren, today as we gather together around the scriptures, around the table, the feast that the Lord has prepared for us, his word to you might be a word of comfort, of comfort. Maybe your soul is troubled and you need to hear a comforting word from Christ. Maybe today that word might be a correction. Maybe there is a correction that is needed and Christ will gently do this as our counselor. He will give you this word to correct your course so that you will remain upon the straight and narrow way. 
Today, maybe it's going to be a word that will help you understand something that you've been wrestling with, something that you've longed to see, but because of the flesh, it's kind of veiled a bit. The Lord can command that word. That's all it takes is the Lord to command the word, and the grace will be dispensed unto you in order to receive what is needful for you. So this time, let us come and sit at the feet of our Lord. This is a time where we can come, we can put aside the cares and the concerns of the day, and we can meet together as brethren who desire to hear what our counselor has to say. And you can trust in what the counselor has to say. He has proven himself. He has proven himself to the Father, and he has proven himself to us by redeeming us and giving us a new man. He can do this, so we can trust in his advice, if you will, and his counsel. So let us avail ourselves of his perfect counsel and great str- and gain strength from the words that are spoken by his ministers. Now, we have ministers today who have prepared. These are ambassadors of Christ, and he has directed them. He has counseled them in what to speak to his people today. So we can take comfort and courage and know that the words that we will hear today are from the counselor, our Lord Jesus Christ.